Hi, if you're new here, let me be the first to welcome you to a very lucrative industry. If you plan to be a claims adjuster and make that very lucrative money, this is the space for you. This is an oldie, but a goodie. So stay tuned and learn something new. Well, I'm going to uh, take you up on the roof, one of the roofs I first went on, and just uh, be able to show you and guide you through what to look for when you're up on the roof. Additionally, being on the roof, uh, was a great experience and that's something I want to share with independent adjusters or those who handle cat claims, who handle roofing claims, just really in the industry of property damage and maybe even storm repair. That may be you. You may be somebody who needs experience and this is who this is for too. I uh, look at the Facebook groups. There's a lot of support out there, but we all need to always be getting training and education to better our skills, to better serve those homeowners and policy holders. Um, let's just pop up this video that I already previewed. Looks like that appears to be hail. I'm zooming in on different hail right spots. Here. You see he's pointing to uh, hail marks. Now there's a big difference between hail right marks here, and thermal here. pops and I'll show you that here in some pictures right in just a here. second. So what happens with the hail spots what I'm learning. Okay, I'm still new at this, so it's not necessarily that I know everything. But what I'm learning is that when you have a thermal pop, and if you're not sure what a thermal pop is, you might want to go talk to your nearest roofer. Uh, what a, or actually look on your own roof, you probably had some, depending on the age of your roof, you probably have some uh, pops or hail up there. And what we look for is when you see hail, you're going to see circle spots. Um, just to pause for one second, I do want to point out that there's a shingle missing on this roof. That nail head is exposed. And with that nail head being exposed, water can start to get in there and start to drip into the house. And that's where you start to see those uh, brown water spots on your ceiling. Why is the water brown? That's a good question. Essentially, it's because the wood that it travels on is brown. So then it hits your white wall and I mean, it becomes brown. So not uh, rocket science there, but a little trivia for you. Yeah, with the, the hell spots, you can see there's like a, 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 a marking that's um, almost circular, but not quite. And I'm sorry, I really can't pause the videos here, but it is going to loop. Uh, you can really see up close you can see hail and thermal spots you're not going to be able to see them from the road this roof that we're on was uh, I think somewhere between 15 and 20 years old I think maybe 2001 or 2003 ish the house was built you can see the black the black marks uh, is not Not damage, that's just algae that's formed on the roof. So the older the roof, the more algae it's gonna have. If you if you have that on your house, you can actually power wash that. I saw the company the other day that does power washing. A good indication that you have storm and wind damage is missing shingles. Wind starts to get, you know, starts to move under here and you have the shingles and it starts to lift it up and it starts to lift it up and eventually the shingle uh, flies off. You can find shingles in um, gardens, driveways, on top of roofs like we just saw there. So I'm going to let this loop one more time. Again, you can see just the big, 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 big hail spots. We did have a a, a hailstorm about four months ago so but this again this roof is very old you can see from the grain of it too that it's old happens when that hail hits that's a great 
an in, um, indication that it's probably experienced more than one hailstorm. We live here in Georgia, and this is like the backwoods of Georgia. So, uh, lots of lots of storms up there. We didn't find it, what they call creasing. But um, again, this was a good, significant. Uh, this was a significant amount of storm damage. It wasn't actually that roof, but you can see um, if you turn your head at a 90 degree angle, you can see right there in the middle there's uh, some granule loss. The insurance company is not going to consider that hail damage. So um, just keep that in mind. When this I thought was wind damage, but it's just granule loss and that's going to be considered wear and tear by the insurance company right there on that middle shingle like that first full shingle it's not the very bottom row but it's that second row you can see right there there's that circle um, I don't remember touching it that's another way to tell like if you touch it and it gives a little bit that that's going to indicate a hell spot um, here you see not a lot of damage on the, this roof I went up I went up this on this roof by myself again I think this is one of the final pictures just I mean not a lot of damage just I mean granule loss maybe a piece of hail right there on that second column right above the shadow but uh, again, it's hard when you're new to really, really tell the difference. Um, needs an experienced eye, but I hope that I'm becoming a better eye to, to really get that. And this is like a backup view. So you see, if you're going to be looking for storm damage, you know, like a storm, like the wind goes in one direction. And so it's going to scrape if wind is really, really coming hard. It's really going to like scrape and make a line. <laughs> you see here, there's no like clean, just like line across multiple shingles. I did not make a claim um, here. I just didn't think I f there was enough damage. Uh, so that's been all. My name is Abahi. And um, if you have any questions, just uh, send me a message. I'm hey guys, if have you ever, let me ask you a quick question. I know you're busy, but what I want to know is, have you ever thought about becoming a claims adjuster? Helping people get back right on their feet after a uh, incident well here's the good news is that uh, claims adjusting is the most uh, rewarding experience that you can possibly have it's a high paying career and it's really really easy to get into and i want you to be able to get into it too i have training set up got training going on right now